Hi, this is Dr. Mercola, and you know, there are many epidemics that we have in health right now, but today I want to talk about diabetes. And it, there's a really strong chance that either you or certainly someone you know or one of your friends or family has this disease. Why? Because one in four Americans, one in four Americans either has diabetes or pre-diabetes. So that really is an epidemic. And fortunately, the good news is that there is a solution, in fact, that it virtually is curable and just about everyone, and I'll tell you how in a, in a little bit. But before I get there, I want to make sure that you understand that there's a distinction between the two types of diabetes. The, the first one is type 1 diabetes, which is relatively rare. Less than 5% of people have it. And it's typically uh, insulin deficiency. The pancreas, uh, through an autoimmune process, loses the ability to create insulin. And without insulin, of course, you're dead. And thank God that we have the ab technological ability to provide insulin. One of the best advancements in medicine is to, to do this because it saves people's lives. Without it, they're dead. And, and, and hopefully in the near future, we'll even develop that uh, for efficiency a bit better to have an artificial pancreas to produce that insulin and, and the feedback mechanism to regulate the levels just the way they're supposed to. But the bulk of people with diabetes, when we talk about it, have type 2 diabetes, which is also known as adult onset or uh, non-insulin dependent diabetes. And that is what I'm talking about. This one in four people struggle with this in this country or are bound for it. And um, as I said, the good news is, is that it is curable. Now, what is, what is the cause of diabetes? Well, many people, when they hear that, they think, well, it's elevated blood sugar. And in fact, that's what many physicians believe and they believe that most of the cause and the damage is related to the elevated blood sugar. But I'm telling you that it's simply not the case. The, the blood sugar is an artifact. It's a side effect of a more foundational physiological process that's undergoing that most physicians are absolutely clueless of because if they understood it, they wouldn't make the very serious mistake, and I'm calling beyond serious mistake, of prescribing insulin for a type 2 diabetic, which I believe at some point in the future will be medically negligent practice and will be grounds for uh, uh, reprimanding a physician's license. Because putting a type 2 diabetic on, ins uh, on insulin will clearly lower their blood sugar, but it will create the foundational cause of the disease to make it worse because the problem with diabetes is that it's insulin resistance and that every one of your cells has insulin receptors on it. And uh, as, the, uh, as you become less and less uh, efficient at processing insulin, those receptors become more resistant. So you need more and more insulin to get the same effect. And, to, uh, and the, it's an absolute mistake to put some a type 2 diabetic on insulin because it's going to just make the problem worse and accelerate the underlying cause of the disease. So, and it's not only insulin, it's leptin, but for the most part, they, they can be viewed similarly. So it's, leptin actually may even have a more powerful role. But insulin and leptin resistance are the, really the cause. So how, how do we address this? Well, fortunately, we address this with our diet. And, you know, it's, this is not rocket science. All we have to do is look and see what the, what are most Americans eating. The number one, number one source of calories in this country is high fructose corn syrup. And that was an innovation that occurred in the mid-70s that we were, and here's the key, it's not so much the fructose and the, the, the sugar itself, because high fructose corn syrup is not really a lot worse than regular table sugar. It's, yes, it's marginally worse, but it, they're pretty similar. The reason why fructose corn syrup is so dangerous is that it's so inexpensive. And because of that, it's in virtually all processed foods. It's dirt cheap, and it makes food taste better. So manufacturers are, you know, liberally throw this in there to increase their sales. And that's where the danger is. That's why it's the number one cause of cal source of calories. Fortunately, there are some simple solutions you can do. So uh, the mo the, 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 most of the, the sugar is loaded in soda. And there's just really no reason you should be having soda. soda uh, whether it's regular sugar or diet soda, which is probably even worse and will increase obesity even worse than regular soda, needs to be avoided. You need to substitute plain, uh, pure water. That's, a, that's the number one most important step you can take to prevent and treat diabetes is making sure you swap out the soda for the water. And the same thing for fruit juice. You really want to have water as your simple uh, beverage. Then in addition to that, you're going to want to pay attention to grains because for most people, grains are a problem, especially of insulin resistance. And that would also be obesity, high blood cholesterol, high uh, blood pressure. So when, when you have those conditions, having grains that are they're rapidly processed to sugar will make the insulin resistance worse and, and conti continue to uh, worsen the whole, whole condition. So you really want to stay away from grains. And that includes even uh, unprocessed organic whole grains, uh, things that would uh, you know, superficially appear to be healthy, but for someone with this condition, will will tend to make it worse. So stay away from grains, and 
Make sure you have plenty of vegetables. And I would also encourage you to take our NT test, nutritional typing, which is available on our home page, and it will help determine whether, with your specific genetics and biochemistry, you're designed to eat a high protein, uh, high fat, low carb diet, or the converse, a high carb, low fat, low protein diet. Now, those carbs, if you have diabetes, of course, should be mostly vegetables, really limited grains until you're able to control that insulin resistance. And so that is the key. And the other key, the essential, crucial component, is to make sure you're exercising. And exercise is, is really an absolute essential, and I think it's almost impossible to treat diabetes without the exercise, at least control it and, and cure it, as I mentioned. So, uh, and I want you to avoid the mistake that I see most people exercising. You know, you have to understand, too, that you have to do this all the time. You just can't do a certain amount and figure, okay, I've got this thing beaten. I can't, don't have to do it the rest of my life. You, you have to do exercise pretty much the rest of your life, and almost every day. Uh, you need some type of activity and movement. And uh, I travel quite a bit, and when I go into hotels, I see people making this mistake all the time, that they're on the cardio pimpin. 90% of people are relying on simple cardio exercises as their form of uh, activity. And that is a mistake. You do not want to do that. You want to make sure that you're getting a comprehensive approach. And, if, and, and uh, the, the key that most people neglect is this high-intensity training, the uh, type that I describe in peak eight exercises, where you're going uh, very fast for a short amount of time and then recovering and then just doing multiple repetitions of that. And that will be far more effective, far more efficient than your cardio exercise. And in 20 minutes of a peak eight type exercise, you can exceed the benefits of, of an hour, even two hours of uh, of cardio type training. Then, of course, you want to include some strength training and flexibility and, and really have a very comprehensive approach. And this is really going to be crucial. You absolutely can, can decrease your body fat and increase, increase your uh, lean body mass and, and, uh, and lower your insulin resistance with this program. And the last point I want to m mention is to make sure that you get outside. Ideally, you want to get outside with as, as minimal amount of clothing as possible, that the sun is shining and as much skin as possible so that you can make vitamin D, because vitamin D absolutely is essential to controlling your blood sugar. And uh, it actually will prevent type 1 diabetes if the blood that the blood vitamin D levels are high enough in a mother during her pregnancy, that has been shown to uh, really radically reduce the, the incidence of this autoimmune disease of type 1 diabetes. But, but the key, if you have type 2, is to make sure your vitamin D levels are at least 50, somewhere between 50 and 70 nanograms per milliliter. And the best way is sunshine. If you, that's not possible, then a safe tanning bed. If that's not an option, then certainly oral vitamin D3, not D2, vitamin D3. And most adults need about five to 10,000 units a day. And uh, that is really crucial. And uh, it's not, you know, I said, said, I don't view it as a supplement, but really, because ideally we're designed to get it from the sun. So these are the principles, and there's other material and information on this page that will go into more specifics. And I would, lots of links on the page, I would encourage you to read it all because this is an epidemic, uh, and it really has some devita devastating consequences. It's a leading cause of amputations below the knees, and blindness, and kidney disease, and strokes. So you've got to address this because not only will it cause those problems with diabetes, but it's a major factor for cancer and heart disease and just about every other chronic degenerative disease. So if you control diabetes, you control the whole system. So because uh, really that, the, the, the treatment approach I described, you know, controlling insulin resistance is really the key. And it also it'll help you age more slowly. So it's really a cr crucial key. Thankfully, we have these tools and resources because, as I said, it's I'm absolutely convinced that they're treating tens of thousands of patients that there's no doubt in my mind that you can absolutely cure this disease without drugs, without surgery, and mostly without supplements. So that's the key. You absolutely have the tools, the resources to take control of your health, and, and by applying these properly, you can do it. You absolutely can do it. It's just a matter of getting the discipline, getting the support, and knowing that you can absolutely take control of your health.